I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I don't really review Nitro since my last review of a Nitro RC car was my uncle's HPI Nitro Savage. But ever since I purchased a Traxxas Nitro Slash, I'll give you guys my early stage on owning a Nitro for the very first time. But first of all, let me begin with this little background. I got my Nitro Slash for under $400 at my local hobby store and I must say, it's a typical two-wheel drive slash dimension-wise with a chassis that's based on the Nitro Rustler. Go ahead and watch my unboxing video on my Nitro Slash and you'll see what I mean. Now if you think you can just gun the throttle and go on your way, you're sadly mistaken. Okay, yes, yeah, sure, you are driving a nitro vehicle regardless if you're just going to do the braking procedure, but it's not just plug and play like an electric RC. You have to go through a braking procedure and also fine tune the engine to adjust the fuel mixture ratio. In other words, you got to richen or lean the mixture in order for the engine to run properly. Now, braking in a nitro engine varies between vehicle to vehicle, but in my case, it requires five tanks of driving, which equates to about an hour between an hour and a half, which includes 15 minutes of cool down every tank of driving for the first two runs. In fact, I had to read an entire owner's manual just to understand how to brake in an engine. You know, I'm new to this stuff, so, you know, I gotta read some of this stuff in order for me to better understand this. But don't worry, I also looked up the Traxxas uh, video that they they posted on YouTube on how to break in the engine um, their way so it's no big deal the first tank on this run for the break-in procedure is simple just quarter throttle burst for only two seconds with the body off and using the 20% fuel that I've just bought at my local hobby store to turn off a nitro engine it usually requires pinching the fuel line that's it. It just basically just blocks the flow of fuel coming into the chamber and not do any combustion. That's, that's, much it. that's pretty much it. Now, some of you Nitro fans out there, I know what you're thinking. I know you're going to be asking this question. Did I fine-tune the engine for the break-in? Eh, just a little bit because there was already smoke coming out of the exhaust, so very little tuning was performed. I'm actually in a different parking lot in this second tank because it's my, the previous parking lot that I was at was already getting full of cars. So anyway, the second tank was pretty much the same thing as the first tank, but this time I applied half throttle. Uh, it was going pretty well until my car suffered wheel lockup as the car had a parking brake. So when I was doing the braking procedure on this Traxxas slash Nitro, um, I was on my second tank doing my second stage on the braking procedure until the car actually I would say lift just turn engaged its parking brake and what I mean by that is whenever I'm trying to move the car the engine is still going but the vehicle itself was not moving but um, I tried to roll it but the car the back end is like the rear tires are like rubbing against the ground so as if the car was as if the car had a parking brake. And I found out what the issue was, was this little disc right here. Um, this actually acts, um, this is actually part of the braking system for the nitro vehicle. And this one acts um, on a real car, let's put this on a real car, for example. This right here acts, as, acts like a rotor. And this is where this piece uh, rubs against with. And this is actually the nitro RC equivalent to your, um, I would say, brake pads and brake calipers because this one actually, this actually acts like a floating disc brake. So this piece that right here that I just moved, right there, that actually moves towards the, towards the disc to allow the car to slow down and to stop. So this one was actually stuck on it, and yeah. So, it uh, looks like there's nothing wrong with it. It's probably because I was doing a lot of hard braking or something. Not really hard, hard braking, but like, um, quick, uh, like, I was gent gentle on the brakes, but um, I had to slow it down as fast as I can, you know. But anyways, yeah, that's, that's what happened. Whoops. Hey, I'm new to Nitro. So, yeah. But we do learn everything. 
So um, this was actually the cause that actually stopped my vehicle from from moving. My third tank is just the same thing as the last tank, you know, half throttle burst, but this time it's only three seconds. I had to adjust my idle speed a little bit since my car was acting like it had a torque converter. Aside from that, it's just like my other runs for the braking procedure. Just drive until you run out of gas. Can I just conclude that the fact that the last two tanks that I'm going to show you was a nightmare? No? Okay, fine. I'll just tell you in greater details. The last two tanks on this braking procedure that I had to do was quite a handful. I had to do a 3 second full throttle burst, 5 seconds on the last tank which added a 2 second hold. Okay, that does sound simple, right? Well, let's put it this way. Yeah, nothing but wheelie making mayhem. Now it's time for me to sum things up now. Aside from all the stress of the braking procedure, I was rewarded with the full performance of the Traxxas TRX 3.3 engine. It sure was a long braking procedure, but it was well worth it. Besides, why are some people complaining about they're not going to get nitrous because they got to go through a braking procedure and it takes a long time just to get it done? Well, I mean, first of all, you have to go through that. Even if you're going to be buying a new car in real life out of a dealership, you know, you got to do some something like that. You got to go through a braking procedure. But, I mean, hey, you're still driving it, so what's the problem? If you're doing a braking procedure on a nitro car, yes, you gotta go through a process, but hey, you are still driving it regardless. Anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this first impressions of my first time driving this thing, going through the braking process. I will have another video on just normal driving footage of this car, you know, doing its own um, thing that it knows best, you know, off-roading and you know, all that kind of stuff. They'll be coming on into a later video, so stay tuned for that. Aside from that, I am done for now, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.